So, okay. Um, good morning, students, once again. So, we'll begin with the class now. Um, last class, we learned about the types and models of airline operation. And apart from that, we learned about airline operations control and uh, the airline's operation control department being the coordination hub and the nerve center of, you know, the, that particular airline. Now, airline operation, as you know, of course, as we learned over all the classes, now so far we have had around four to five classes and we learned that airlines operation is a crucial factor in the airline industry. Airline operation management, in fact, is a crucial factor in the airline industry. Why? Why do we say that? Can you answer me? Why do we say that airline operations and management is a significant or a crucial or an important factor in the airline industry? Now, simply because it has a direct impact on the customer and the business and the goodwill that the airline is building in the market. So thereby, airlines operation and management is significant. The airlines has to be operated and managed very well and managed effectively so as to deliver the right services and effective services so as to impact the customers positively and thereby build business and their goodwill in the market. Now, so far we have discussed, you know, uh, chapter one, chapter one, which spoke about the history and the structure of airlines. Then we moved on to learn the fundamentals of airline management. Then in chapter three, we learned about airline company structure and airports airline nexus. That is the, the relationship uh, between the airports as well as the airlines. Then in chapter four, we learned about the types and the models of airline operation. Chapter five, that is during the last class, we learned about airline operations control that being the coordination hub and the nerve center. Today, as you can see on the screen, we are going to learn about airline schedule, uh, which is chapter six. And of course, uh, during the next half of the class, we are going to learn about airlines operation deviation. Now, what is airline scheduling? Now, Again, as the slide says, it's a bit of reiteration that what I've already told you earlier that is now some time back. In the earlier chapters, we learned about airlines and the airport industry, which have gone humongous changes over the years. That means it has, you know, drastically changed over the years. It has become more prominent over the years. It has, uh, you know, for example, it has incorporated even AI system today, that is artificial intelligence system today. Today, we have got the most advanced techniques in the airline, in the aviation industry, rather in the airlines and the airports that we use today. So it has undergone humongous changes or, you know, significantly drastic changes at a, you know, at a huge level over the years. It has evolved over the years. So airlines are normally, again, public corporations. But today we see that many airlines are privatized apart from the general regional fleet. For example, Air India in um, Air India is an airline. Uh, it was uh, like Nicole as a national airlines of uh, India. It was a, a, you know, a public corporation. It was a government company. But today Air India is privatized. That's an example for you. Well, airlines are granted the right to compete in the market. However, within the ambit of law, within the purview of law, federal regulations and the IATA, that is International Air Transport Association and rules. Now, airlines, they fix routes and generally fleets as per public demand. That means they plan their routes and they generate their fleets. That is how many aircrafts are required for a particular route. So they fix routes, they strategically fix routes according to public demand. Okay, like, you know, okay, today they travel from, say, Dubai to Australia or Dubai to South Africa or Dubai to the, so, so Johannesburg, South Africa. So that whether there is a need for a direct flight. So they, they you know, devise and schedule those uh, routes and they generate fleets that is the type of aircraft that needs to be um, you know uh, used for a particular route or for a particular 
a flight. So what type of aircraft has to be used? So they normally, you know, strategize it in advance as per public demand and the market studies. So the foundation of flight schedule is the market study and demand study. So you can call it that way, that the basics or the foundation of flight scheduling is, you know, it is normally based on the market study and the demand study that is uh, according to the public demand. Now, a flight schedule is devised or strategically, you know, crafted either on the existing schedule or an entirely new schedule. So they might devise it depending upon the schedule that they already have, or they might devise a new schedule, all of which practically begins a year in advance of the operation. So, you know, they plan airline schedules or, you know, it is airline uh, schedules are devised at least a year in advance. So the final schedule is in terms of the airline's timetable of its flight operations, enumerating city connectivity, flight numbers, departure and arrival times and the type of aircraft that will be used. Are you understanding me? I'm reiterating it for you again. Now, airline scheduling is timetabled as per the operations and they clearly list out, enumerate or mention city connectivity. Okay, they are traveling from say, for example, Dubai to Johannesburg. So this will be the flight number, for example, Etihad Airways, say EY, whatever is the number, say EY, just, uh, just, just I'm just giving you by way of example, though it's not a real flight number, say EY123, uh, for example. Okay, so it's flying from Dubai to Johannesburg. Then the departure time. Okay, so say it will, the departure time is at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And the arrival time, so how many hours it would take? Uh, and the arrival time next, and the type of aircraft that will be used. So this is flight scheduling, which is normally devised, strategically devised, based on the market study and public demand. Okay, you know, it is devised one year in advance. <clears throat> Sorry. Now the phases of airline scheduling. Now in the phases, the three key departments which are involved in scheduling are the marketing department, why the study, the public demand, to the operations department, why? Because they are the ones who strategically devise their plan and the scheduling department because they are the ones who normally schedule the flights. So these three departments coordinate together for the purpose of airline scheduling. The role of the market department is to study the passenger demands, priorities, and needs, and then plan accordingly to devise a strategic forecast model schedule. Now, the scheduling department gets advice before, gets active before the actual schedule. It gets advice from the marketing department, and it gets active before the actual schedule period and studies the available resources to enable them to prepare generic schedules and plan towards allocation of resources as per the schedule. Then the operations department, it comprises of the AOCC, the AOCC that we learned during the last class, the Airline Operations Control Center, which we said was the nerve center or the coordination hub. Apart from that, the operations department also comprises of the Maintenance Operation Control Center, that is MOCC, and the Allied Station Operations Control Center, and in coordination implement the devised schedules. So the operations department normally is, you know, responsible for implementing the devised schedules. Now, the phases involved in airline scheduling are service planning, devising schedules, allocation of resources, and plan execution. So this is, again, very important. Service planning, devising schedules, allocation of resources, and plan execution. What is service planning? At this phase, the process of schedule generation begins primarily with a schedule plan a complete scheduled service plan is devised for one entire circle. So what is the entire circle or cycle? I'm sorry. What is that entire cycle? That entire cycle is a particular period. One cycle equals to one day or daily schedule in domestic airlines perspective. 
And in international airlines perspective, one cycle, that would mean one week. So therefore, the process of schedule generation begins primarily with a schedule plan. And this complete schedule service plan is devised for one cycle. When it comes to domestic airlines, one cycle would mean one day or a daily schedule. And in case of international airlines, it would be called as one week, or that means it would refer to if they say, if the international airlines is saying, okay, you know, service planning for one cycle is ready. That means they are meaning that they are, you know, they have devised the service planning. The schedule is for one week. And if a domestic airline says that, okay, one cycle is ready, that means they are meaning that the daily schedule of one day schedule is already ready. So lucidly, the, the schedule enumerates the set of services that the airline systems would normally, you know, have. Okay, uh, there is a problem with the slides. Okay, we go to the seventh slide first. So the type of services and the extent will vary from one place to another and will vary from airline to airline while planning the available resources and the future required resources would be taken into consideration. The next task is devising the schedules. The scheduling group prepares the final schedules upon receipt of the service plan, a list of generic resources and operating constraints of any. Then the optimal schedule is devised that will be exhibited to the passengers of the airlines by addressing the constraints and ironing them out. That is, whatever impediments is there, whatever problems will be there. They try to address those problems and they try to root out that problems or try to at least iron out those problems. The passenger schedule will include the exact departure time and the arrival time and the allied and the other additional details. The flight schedules may be subject to interruptions. As we all know, sometimes flight schedules are interrupted. It could be due to mechanical issue or it could be due to weather or due to some foreign object in, in hindrance. For example, uh, like I have had an experience where, uh, you know, flights have been delayed because a particular flight was delayed because of a bird which tried to come against the aircraft while it was taking off. So these that is uh, we call it uh, in you know airline parlance as foreign object hindrance or there is something on the runway so again that's a foreign uh, there is foreign object hindrance so for all these uh, you know detections for detecting a foreign object you know we got uh, a system we have a system called as FOD that is foreign object detector. So sometimes when there is an, a foreign object that is detected or there is some aircraft mechanical issues or probably even due to weather, say it's snowing heavily, depending upon what type of country it is, or it is raining heavily. Say, for example, in India, you would say that, the, I mean, there are heavy rains during the monsoon period. Sometimes the flights are delayed. And if you take some other country with snows, say Switzerland, for example, so probably it's delayed because of snow during that particular season, of course, seasonal. So they can be common disruptions caused due to weather, you see. And then next we move on to thus, a good flight schedule incorporates a buffering mechanism in terms of sufficient resources to cover up the slack and or the lacunae that is like whatever is lacking flight uh, or the shortcomings rather, flight delays providing competitive on-time services. So devising schedules without a contingency plan may look promising on paper, but practically when the inevitable or even the unforeseen hits, it is not, it, it is not really promising. So therefore, what we are trying to say here is a contingency plan must always be devised while devising schedules. That is, if something, you know, something that is inevitably, uh, you know, contingent occurs or something unforeseen hits, then what would be the remedy for it? So a contingency plan should include, you know, um, the problem as well as how they would remedify that particular problem. So even the problem and the question of remedy should form a part of a strategic airline schedule. Next is allocation of resources. The ensuing phase of operations takes control and assigns relevant resources to the corresponding schedules. Then we have the gate scheduling team. You know, you got this, gates. So the gate scheduling team takes charge of allotting individual gates to flight. Like when, normally when you get the boarding pass, you, you see, I mean, uh, which gate will your 
uh, you'll have to take in order to board the flight. For boarding, they will say, okay, you go to so and so gate. It, it, they might, it might have number or alphabets. For example, go to proceed to gate three or proceed to gate 53, whatever. So further, this is again a twofold process of executive scheduling, which begins and involves the maintenance of operation schedules and rescheduling. Next is the execution of plan. Following the third phase mentioned about is reiterated that the ensuing twofold process of executive scheduling begins with involving or begins with which involves the maintenance of operation schedules and scheduling. So that means it involves or includes maintenance of operation schedules and rescheduling. The operation schedules reflect the actual departure and arrival times, and they take into consideration schedule deviations, if any. That means if there is any changes in the schedule, so schedule deviations, if any, it takes into consideration. And in case of deviations, the process of rescheduling is initiated. Say the flight is delayed by one hour. So again, they start rescheduling the flight. So thereby, airline systems and flight schedules are a complex task in the airline industry. Why? Because of several factors and variables and constraints that need to be considered on one hand. On the, on the other hand, it much depends upon flight schedules. Effective flight scheduling impacts smooth flight operations. Smooth flight operations are an outcome of proper organization, planning, and control. I'm reiterating again, repeating it for you. Smooth flight operations are a result of proper organization, planning, and control. That means proper organization or effective organization, planning, and control certainly precedes smooth flight operation or unhindered flight operation. Smooth flight operations, why? That means there has been good or effective organization, planning, and control. And all these factors lead to an optimum generation of revenue and obviously ultimately profits. So the higher the city links and connectivity, the higher will be the probability of revenue generation. That means the more city the airline connects, the more uh, uh, probability of re revenue generation. Next is aircraft maintenance, of course, highly depends upon airline scheduling. Yet another aspect of system scheduling is station scheduling, which predominantly deals with the resources at each station or each aerodrome or at each air station or aerodrome. So these resources include baggage handling, mechanics, in internal vehicles, internal buses, gates, refueling equipment, etc., which is managed by ground staff. And of all the tasks, gate scheduling is a most critical one because it relies on various other factors such as availability, vacancy, security, etc. Station schedules are devised and updated by the operations department. So next, we will move on to airline operational deviations. Okay, so today, now again, a, a, you know, a recapitulation of what we discussed. We discussed about airline scheduling, the significance of the importance of airline scheduling, and that why it is necessary and how it is done. And the two basic factors that are taken into consideration for airline scheduling is, of course, studying the public demand studying the market demand and then also studying the various routes that are there and then based on the market demand they will devise routes and they divide devise schedules then we also learned about the three uh, the the key departments the three key departments that is the marketing department the operations department and the scheduling department we studied the phases that are involved in airline scheduling, service planning, devising schedules, allocation of resources, and planning execution. And we also learned the importance, and we said that for smooth uh, flight operations, obviously, it is a result of proper organization, planning, and control. And apart from that, we said aircraft maintenance highly depends upon airline scheduling. So this is all for airline scheduling. Next, we will move on to study airlines' operation deviations.